Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, it's antenna review time. I have a new antenna I've been playing around with. Uh, a few videos back, I showed how to use G-Predict to control the ICOM 705. And I was mentioning that I wanted to try to work through a satellite this year. And I was looking at antennas, and I was trying to think of my options there. And I live in an RV, so anything that I go with has to be versatile. Uh, it has to be easy to break down and put up. Um, it has to give me as much functionality for my buck as possible. Um, and it can't be too big. I don't have space. I, I have very limited space. I'm tripping over antenna accessories in here. <laughs> so uh, I thought about egg beaters. Um, I thought about um, something like the Aero Yagi, multiband Yagi, uh, and, and various directional options. Uh, but then ultimately I decided upon the Tram 1411 disc cone antenna. Now, why a disc cone? Well, I've had one before, and they have a pattern that's more omnidirectional than something like my vertical Slim Jim that I've been using for VHF. It's a, a single band, two meter antenna that oh, I can also sort of work on 440, but not so well. Um, it's a great two meter antenna great antenna for two meters, but um, I had a disc cone before. A disc cone antenna, it's a disc over a cone shape, and what happens is, at, in this geometry, the RF finds the spot between the, the cone and the disc that the gap is a resonant length. And so over the entire range of length from, from the longest area down to the short area, you have resonance. So a, a disc cone will give you a very broad spectrum that it can operate in. Now the tram uh, is shown here on Amazon. It's about $70. And it has a vertical radiator on top with a small loading coil. Now they bill it there as a CB transmit uh, band scanner antenna with a coverage of 25 megahertz to 1.3 gigahertz. Uh, now, CB band is 27 megahertz, um, up to almost 28, which is just barely below the amateur 10 meter band. So it's not uncommon for people to take CB antennas and shorten them slightly and move them up into the 10 meter band, which is exactly what I did with this tram. Now to facilitate getting it on CB, they have this vertical element on top with a loading coil and two of these uh, legs for the lower part of the disc cone that have loading coils on them right here. You can just sort of see that wrapped underneath the plastic there. That's a loading coil. And if you put these two elements on on opposite sides down there on the cone and that vertical stinger on, it resonates down at 27 megahertz in the CB band. But it also came with two regular legs, so you don't need to use these. I put those on, and then I shortened down the, uh, the vertical element, pushed it down in, in as far as it would go, and discovered that it was resonant right at the top of 10 meters, right around the FM segment of 10 meters, which is perfect. Um, vertical antenna on the FM segment of the band is perfect. And I've, I've got another NFED half wave that I use for HF that covers 10 meters for the sideband portion. So the antenna can be used to transmit um, on not only on the one little portion of 10 meters, uh, and then it covers all of the uh, upper amateur bands from 2 meters through uh, 1.25 meters, which is the 220 megahertz band, 70 centimeters, the UHF band, 33 centimeters, the 902 megahertz segment, which we also can operate in there limitedly, in a limited fashion. Uh, and then the 23 centimeters uh, microwave uh, portion of the band, 1.24 to 1.295 gigahertz. Uh, it's got a reasonable SWR below 2 to 1 in each of those bands. So it gives me the versatility that I wanted. Um, I can operate on multiple bands. And satellites. I've been receiving some of the NOAA uh, satellites, and I did a comparison between the Slim Jim 
uh, and the disc cone. Currently recording a pass of NOAA 18 right here, and it's coming, going to come almost directly overhead. And if I go over here to GQRX, right now we're on the Slim Jim. If I look over here at the settings for the SDR Play, antenna B is the Slim Jim. Signal is just about, not quite down to 60. But watch if I switch to, this, to the disc cone, which is on antenna A. Here we go. You can see the signal level came up, and we lost the bit of noise that we had. Let's go back to the Slim Jim. Okay, it dropped just slightly. We're in a good spot right now. I'm going to leave it on the Slim Jim because the satellite is now, if we look over here in the lower left, almost directly overhead, so it should be getting into a null. The vertical antenna should have a null above it. Yeah, now we're starting to get noise off the Slim Jims. Let's switch to the disc cone. Oh, and it got much better. Almost directly overhead in the null of the Slim Jim, the disc cone got much better. Look at that. It's less than uh, 50 dB, or 50 down dBFS. Let's go back to Slim Jim. Yeah, look at that. Dropped way off. So it's performing on VHF, it's performing a little better than the Slim Jim when it comes to copying the weather satellites. Uh, here is one of my recent captures from NOAA 19, and it's the best capture I've ever had from one of the satellites. I had a good solid copy on the bird pretty much from horizon to horizon. It was about two degrees above the horizon that it really got solid, and then it was like that the entire pass. The radiation pattern of a disc cone is less like a donut, more like an apple, and so it, it covers um, except for directly above it, uh, it, it seems to receive the satellites much, much better than I was getting with the uh, Slim Jim. And uh, what about working satellites? Well, it's not the optional antenna for that. However, I did make my very first ever contact through the International Space Station's repeater. Ah, there we go. Now I'm starting to see you something in the waterfall and it's getting stronger KB9 RLW Delta Mike 25 Station ending Lima, this is Kilo Bravo Niner, Romeo Lima Whiskey, Delta Mike 25. Kilo so Bravo 6 Japan Fox Charlie Lima, Delta Mike 05. Romeo Lima Whiskey, N6 Papa Alpha Alpha. N6 Papa Alpha Alpha, KB9 RLW, Delta Mike 25, Roger Roger. I missed your grid. I uh, missed your grid. I missed your grid. I'll look you up. Thanks. Seventy-three. Yay! <laughs> My first uh, ISS contact. Well, not actually directly with the ISS, but uh, that would be cool. Uh, one of these days, that's my bucket list QSL card to have up there on the wall behind me. Um, talking to the astronauts, that would be a thrill. So yeah, it's not the best for working satellites, but it's possible now. Um, since you can transmit on 2 meters and 440 just about equally well with it, uh, it, it works. Uh, I'm trying to work through some other birds too. So that's, that's fun. You know, that opens up a door for me. Um, mounting it. Now it's not a very heavy antenna. On the bottom of it, where the RF connector is, there is a 35 millimeter housing with two uh, set screws that you could then put it onto a pipe and, and mount it up to. Uh, I put it on a, a three quarter inch uh, diameter PVC pipe, which has about a 27 millimeter outer diameter for my European friends. Um, and I 3D printed some clamps to clamp it onto the ladder on the back of my RV. And the uh, coax comes down out of the bottom 
on the PVC as you can see here and then it goes over and connects to a connector on my RV. Uh, it's been up for a little while now. It's uh, been up through some pretty heavy winds, 20 to 30 mile an hour winds, and it hardly moves around at all. And at the bottom of it, that uh, 35 millimeter housing, uh, to adapt it to the PVC, I 3D printed a solid TPU shim uh, with TP out of TPU 95A. So the set screws, or the grub screws, compress the TPU against the pipe, and it's on there pretty solid. It, it's not going to come off. The clamps are interesting. I 3D printed those too. I'm doing some material tests. I've got three different types of material out there right now for the clamps to see how they hold up in the Arizona sun. P, uh, PLA, um, TPU, uh, PCTG, which is a new material I'm playing with, and uh, Prusa's carbon fiber infused PETG on the bottom clamp, uh, which is the strongest. So I want to see how those are going to hold up in the Arizona sun. It it allows me to, um, the clamps on the ladder allow me to quickly put it up and take it down, relatively speaking, because I can just slide the PVC up out of those clamps and um, take the antenna down. And then when I put it up, I just slide them back down through. The clamps will stay on the ladder. So, yeah, I can be on the air with it within a half an hour of getting parked. Well, maybe about an hour, because putting the antenna together, taking it apart, takes a little time. The uh, metal elements thread into it and then have a locking nut on each that lock them in place. Uh, and um, yeah, that's it. It's the, uh, it's the tram uh, disc cone that I'm going to be using to work satellites and using for my VHF and UHF comms when I'm parked uh, for a period of time in the RV. It's a neat antenna. It's about the cheapest disc cone I found and yet it's built pretty well. Um, I think it's a good deal. Hope you found that interesting, and we will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.